old disheveled dog here. Yeah, I can get a haircut and shave soon. <clears throat> Anywho, this was the season ender for the Mandalorian, and oh my, what an amazing episode! All action, taking up right where the f the uh, last episode left off. Din Djarin, with some help from Grogu, escapes his two captors in a hellacious fight, and then starts working his way towards where Moff Gideon is. Uh, while that's going on, uh, Bo-Katan and the rest of her group uh, make it to safety, and they discover that the people that still lived on Mandalore have been able to cultivate gardens underground. So there is able an ability to sustain life here for them. Meanwhile, one of the uh, Mandalorians who had gotten away and was flying to warn uh, the others gets a message from Bo-Katan before he hits the outer atmosphere and can't talk to her anymore, in which everyone gets onto the fighter ships, leaving the command ship with just one person. And they all go down to Mandalore to basically gather their forces and fight to take back their planet. While the guy on the command ship is basically firing at the fighters that are coming up to take out the command ship, as well as steering it so that it doesn't look so obviously like a decoy. Then we get an interesting bit that reminds me very much of uh, the final third of Game of Death. The, the old Bruce Lee movie where he has to go up different levels and then fight someone, go up the next level, fight someone. And they do that here, only it's with a series of force fields down a corridor. And he has his little RD unit uh, opening them one at a time so he can take them out. And they are also blocked from opening it and rushing him. A pretty exciting scene. They then find the room full of Moff Gideon clones, which Din Djarin destroys. He and Grogu then encounter Moff Gideon, and Mando gets his butt kicked by Moff Gideon, and the three guards... throw back to the Emperor's guards, uh, start to uh, go after Grogu, who, using his uh, force abilities, is able to evade them, though they do destroy his uh, vehicle. All the Mandalorians meet up, and they go into a hellacious battle with all the troopers. Bo-Katan then shows up to fight Moff Gideon, and Din Djarin goes to rescue Grogu, and between the two of them working together, he manages to defeat all three guards. Moff Gideon just mops the floor with Bo-Katan, and in a bit of uh, maliciousness, destroys the Dark Saber. Basically, if he can't have it, there's not going to be one, although I'm sure it can be repaired. And then says one of the most non-self-aware lines I think a villain has ever said. Saying that the Mandalorians are useless without their trinkets. And they're not great warriors. While he himself is using those self-same trinkets to defeat them. Like I said, not very self-aware. But then... Din Djarin, Grogu, and Bo-Katan all team up and do a pretty good job of taking down Moff Gideon. Oh, remember that command ship that was way up there? Way, 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 way up there? Well, it has been blown <laughs> to pieces. It was just a big hunk of junk barreling down towards the planet. But he can still steer it, and he's heading it right for the base. And 
warns everybody, and they all get out except, of course, the three battling Moff Gideon. And he gets out just before it hits, and it blows everything to Kingdom Come. But Grogu, using his Force powers, manages to shield Bo-Katan, Din Djarin, and himself from the blast. And it looks like Moff Gideon got taken out with that blast. But there's no body, so who knows. Then uh, Bo-Katan relights the Great Forge. Mandalore is home now. And at the Living Waters, although Grogu cannot take the oath, Din Djarin officially adopts him as his own son which now means his name is Din Grogu, and he is an official Mandalorian apprentice. Leaving the planet, because he, uh, he has to earn a living. Apparently. And he goes to uh, the outermost base of the Republic. And they are a pilot again. So, uh, didn't write his name down. Uh, of course I didn't. Anyhow. And makes a clandestine deal to uh, track down on a case-by-case -case basis uh, Empire Remnants. Then Renegades. Then goes back to Navarro where uh, a member of the Mandalorians have a slab of land out there where he sets up home base with Grogu. Din Grogu, and also uh, managed to get a fully repaired IG-11, having scrounged up a new head. And that is the official Sheriff of Navarro, because he's a battle droid, originally. And that's how we end things. Uh, most interesting for me was uh, the fact that they now explain why Moff Gideon had been wanting Grogu in the first season. He had managed to isolate the, um, oh God, what are those called? The, uh, that one genetic line, metachlorians, the metachlorians in Grogu, and was able to instill that in his clones so that he would make a clone army with force powers. Well, that's down the tubes now, unless one of them survived. Maybe a clone survived. Maybe Moff Gideon survived. We don't know. Something to think about for next season. But yeah, really a good action-packed episode. Uh, we got to see both Din Djarin and Bo-Katan show off fighting prowess. <coughs> Moff Gideon was a great villain an adversary very hard to beat one-on-one. -on -one. And we got some great comedy from Grogu, who <laughs> is evading of uh, the uh, guards and also his using force powers to keep them from uh, ganging up on uh, Din Djarin at one point. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to next season now that Mandalore has been restored, more or less. And uh, what kind of jobs Din Djarin and Din Grogu are going to go on? Well, until next time.